So what Airvine is all about is using 60 gigahertz wireless uh, to build better backbones or what we call a wireless free freeway within the enterprise. First, I wanna just introduce our team. I'll be doing most of the presentation today. I'm president and CEO of Airvine. Um, I have a 40, year, 40 years of experience in the networking industry. Um, in the last 20 years, I've done several startups. Uh, I have experience in the building products and, and, doing, uh, build, and running businesses around networking products that include RF technologies, optical technologies, was involved in satellite communications during the old days, plus data communications and networking. So I've done several companies, some startups, some large companies. That's my background. I'm very excited about Airline. Um, we have three other team members here who are here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Dave Isaacson, who's our chief engineer, is responsible for all the baseband parts of our design, the modems, designing the modems, uh, and the affordable correction, all the different networking technologies as well. Dave has done many, many modems before in his past. He's also done, he's designed modem chips as well. We have Steve Ratko, who's our product marketing specialist, who's here to answer any questions you might have. He has long years of experience in this industry as well. And Dr. Asan Afshari, who's a chief scientist, who's actually a professor at the University of Michigan. That's his full-time job. He works for us as well. And he's been responsible for all the antenna and the RF portions of our technology, which are, as, as you will see, pretty critical um, to accomplish all of our, all of our specifications. Uh, Dr. Afshari as well is a chip designer, so RF chip designer, uh, which will be important as our story evolves. And any questions you might have, I'll just uh, that are detailed enough that I'll turn them over, turn it over to them. If I can answer them, I'll answer it myself. If not, I'll turn it over to these folks to answer questions you might have. Uh, so we were um, founded in uh, Silicon Valley in 2017 by Hatch Graham, who's our executive chairman and founder. Um, and we've always always been focused right from day one on building uh, better backbones uh, using 60 gigahertz wireless. Recently, we raised five million in seed funding, which is our first fundraising event. I just closed that a couple of months ago. Our lead investor was Valley Capital Partners. We have a very, very strong engineering team, a world-class engineering team. This is a difficult technical problem to solve, and we need a world-class team, and we do have that. And it, it varies uh, from very strong RF and antenna designers to modem designers to baseband digital designers and lots of software guys, very, very senior software guys from the industry. In fact, many of them come from companies that are in the Wi-Fi space. We've got many from Ruckus, for example, uh, very senior guys from there. And we've got the engineering team put together now that we've done our fundraising and we're actually on our way to building our first product. Uh, we are gonna do a pilot of this product in about four months, in the middle of February. So we are inviting people to be uh, end users to be part of our pilot. It won't have all the features of the product, but it'll have enough features to prove the essential elements will be installed in their facilities and we can do pilots. Uh, starting in the middle of 1Q, and we intend to start shipping the product for revenue in the second half of 2021, starting July of 2021. And so far, we've been going out to the market and canvassing uh, end users, network integrators, systems res uh, resellers, systems integrators to get feedback on this product so that we can, we have a product management team that's talking to customers so that we want to understand what is the entry market, where are the pain points are highest, uh, what are the features we need for the first version of the product, to get all that feedback so that we can design our first version with the right features for that entry market. So we've been doing that and we've, in the process of doing that, achieved strong interest from the industry. So far though, we've been in stealth mode. In fact, this event here is our first kind of pre-launch or marketing launch, if you will, uh, of our technology and our product. So this is the very first one. We turned on our website yesterday, turned on social media just a few days ago. So what's the big idea we have here? The big idea is to use 60 gigahertz wireless to build a wireless freeway within the enterprise, indoors mostly, and all we are a wireless backbone that combines, and this is the key part, that combines the speed and reliability of optical fiber with the ease and flexibility of wireless without the cost and the complexity and the inflexibility of optical fiber and cabling. So this is, on, this is the product that's on its way to building an all wireless enterprise. Every aspect of the network within the enterprise will be wireless. The last piece is the backbone and this makes the backbone wireless as well. Why is this an important um, idea? Because today's network backbones are under significant pressure. 
lots of new devices coming on board, client access devices, lots of users, bandwidth hungry applications. What is constraining all of this is the network backbone, the cabling, which is legacy cabling built decades ago sometimes that has limited bandwidth. Everything else has high bandwidth. The coming into the enterprise, the ISPs have high bandwidth, the devices have high bandwidth, the users are growing, but the network cabling and the fiber and the infrastructure is the limiting, is limiting. And that's the problem we're out to solve with our wireless backbone. And why is that? Because the vast majority of today's enterprise still rely on Cat5 cabling. I know there's in increases happening, so there's a lot of upgrade needed as these new bandwidth applications are coming online and these new devices come online. And these have to, these network uh, backbones have to be upgraded from the old ca cabling, but there's a conundrum in upgrading with copper cable or even fiber. It's an inflexible solution. If you want to later on move, move the network around, add parts of the network and change the network, it becomes a problem. It's labor intensive and the costs are going up. Time incentive takes a long time to install the upgrade to a new fiber infrastructure, it takes days or weeks to deploy. And in some of the older buildings where lots of them around, it becomes, a, it becomes a real challenge because you have brick concrete walls, you have no false ceilings, and so hard to drill. In fact, in some cases, you cannot drill holes and so on. So it becomes very difficult to do. So upgrading with cabling and fiber is, is a hard problem. It takes a long time. It's expensive. And it's also inflexible. And this just shows you an example of the cost advantage with our, 50 giga, with our 60 gigahertz wireless solution compared to just cabling is one fourth the cost. But the most important thing is the amount of time it takes to install. We can install our system, our backbone in hours rather than days and weeks that it takes with conventional cabling. So our, what is our solution? Our solution uses 60 gigahertz. If you focus on this picture on the right, there's several nodes. Each of our nodes is called a wave tunnel. That's a product name. That's why we have that in Twitter. Uh, and the wave tunnel consists of a, a device that we put on the wall and then with a, and then we put several devices around the enterprise, around the building, and all of these devices get connected together to form a, what we call a, a self-organizing ethernet network. And installing these is very easy. Reconfiguring them is easy. And of course, they have to, the beams have to penetrate walls and that's the big issue at 60 gigahertz, traverse longer distances. And that's where our technology enables it. We push the envelope in the RF and antenna parts of the technology, which is a key component and key enabler of this. Um, we have non-line-of-sight non -line of performance. Our system design is unique. By the way, we've applied for patents on our overall system design. We've gotten, we've applied for four patents. We've gotten three, one is pending. Uh, the scalability is high because as we'll, as we'll show you, the 60 gigahertz band has a lot of bandwidth available so we can have high data rates. But the important thing is not just the RF technologies that allow us to penetrate walls, but the way the system is designed that allows us to maintain a high degree of redundancy and resiliency because if we can organize the system like a ring where one end is connected to the, um, to the controller of the gateway in the wiring closet, and then the ring goes through the enterprise and provides uh, a backhaul for all these devices in the enterprise, the Wi-Fi 6 devices, 5G devices, and IoT devices. Each of these nodes is an add drop or relay mode. It can pass data through or it can add, and add uh, data from that particular area from the device connected to it, uh, drop data. So each of them is like an ethernet switch or an add drop ethernet switch plus a relay. And it's ring based because any one element of the ring could fail and then the ring can turn on itself. And I'll show you later on, there's two beams going around, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. It's like a sonnet slash STH ring. So one element fails, it has the ring turns around and the rest of the network continues. We also are managing it on site or through the cloud. That's a high level view of our solution. I have a good that question for you. Uh, if you if you have a moment, and just tell me so if we're going to cover it later. But it's an awfully big claim that 60 gigahertz through walls, and I understand that if you guys have solved this problem uh, non line of sight with 60 gigahertz, um, you're not going to be revealing all the details. But are we going to be covering more about how that's possible? Um, because that's uh, you know RF is RF. Correct. We do. We will cover details of how that is possible. At right. high level, we'll do that. And if you want to go into more detail, we can go to the breakout room and do that as well. And that's the okay. key function that, so we have, you know, if you look at our system design, that's one of the key components of the system design is the, the inventions that are required to make that happen. Right. And I, I understand that because, you know, there would be significant limitations to um, the pervasiveness of this, or you, you would have to have a high density of uh, what would traditionally be called access points. I'm assuming you're calling them something else. 
um, but what would be traditionally called access points to get access to it if you were going to run 60 gigahertz and not have some level of higher pervasiveness than what has traditionally been possible. So this is not an access point. As I said, this is a backbone. Access yeah, points. I understand. Yeah. I, I, I was trying not to use the wrong word. I don't know what you're calling it. So, yeah. um, okay. Okay, but we will answer your question about how we can penetrate walls and traverse these distances later. Okay. And what are the technologies involved in doing that? Yep. It's absolutely. So what, and while we were asking, there was a question on Twitter as to whether this was um, whether this was 802.11 um, AY, since it was 60 gig, that, that was, a, a, I guess, a logical question to ask, or if it was something else. So the our first product uses 802.11 AD, um, and uh, as because it's merchant silicon that's available there. Our, right. ultimate, our ultimate product, a second generation product, will actually use, will not use a standard protocol for the ring itself. It will be, mm -hmm. it will be a native Ethernet ring. Roger. But okay. our first product, because we wanted to get it out quickly, uses merchant silicon and we use 802.11 AD chips. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, and, and we will answer the question about penetrating walls in a, in a, in a couple of slides. So, we use 60 gigahertz because it you all the bandwidth that's available. So six of these 2.16 gigahertz channels. It's the only unlicensed spectrum band that allows us to match the speed of fiber. So that's why we're using that. And of course, with it comes all its problems with penetrating walls. And that's the problem we have solved. So we can actually deploy 60 gigahertz through the enterprise as a backbone technology. So this has not been possible until now, as you, as, as you pointed out. And uh, it's the first industry solution that easily extends the backbone without costly or cumbersome cabling. So how did we do that? So at a very high level, there's a collection of technologies. And if you have some detailed questions about these, I can turn it over to Asan or Dave to answer them, but it is a collection of technologies that makes this possible. First is an antenna, the phased array antenna. We have a very special design phased array antenna that does beam forming, forms pencil thin beams and has very high antenna gain. Now that's important because the transmitter and receiver gain are both high. And as a result, the link budgets are high enough to penetrate it, to penetrate walls and to overcome the attenuation of walls and also they overcome the free space loss. So the combination of the high antenna gain, both of the transmit and receive antennas, uh, which is 30 dBi, which is the industry leader, uh, allows us that's one component. The second component is the, the phase noise of the RF is low enough. The noise figure is low and the many, many RF parameters are low enough that allows us to have high signal noise ratio. The third component is to use high modulation rates and enabled by these technologies and these high modulation rates. Because our first product is 16 qualm, our second product is 256 qualm, and these high modulation rates allow the transmission of very, very high data rates through the, through the system. The next component is electronic beam steering, which is key for ease of installation and for the LOS performance. Now, beam steering is not an easy problem to do at these frequencies. It's, it's easy to do, but you can't do it with precision, and it's also not so easy to do while maintaining the flatness and the gain. So we have tackled that problem. We do beam steering by maintaining the flatness and the gain, whereas many others do beam steering and you lose a lot of gain in the process. We don't in our, in our design. And so all of these RF and antenna technologies make it possible for us to overcome the attenuation of barriers within the enterprise and penetrate the distance that go, and traverse the distances that we are specifying. We can go up to 100 meters, sometimes through walls, uh, certainly in free space within the enterprise. And also our box, and to, to wrap it up, although this has nothing to do with 60 gigahertz, we also have full access switch in the box. It's a layer two switch. So we can essentially create a self-organizing ethernet, ethernet network and interconnect to other devices via ethernet ports. So at a high level, this is how we tackle the problem of penetrating walls at 60 gigahertz. And we have done two years of system simulation. In fact, ASAN did that before. and. Uh, to prove that at, this, at these system parameters with the system link budgets, that it actually works. And then last year, a year uh, we designed an actual antenna and Dave Isaacson, who's with me here, tested that antenna through these barriers. We have a whole bunch of test results that prove that it actually works through different types of barriers at different data rates that we're talking about. Can I ask what type of material you've tested with? I mean, as you even said, you're talking about old buildings have different types of walls. Correct. So we've tested with all kinds of material, we tested with drywall, we tested with wood, glass, brick, even cinder block and concrete. Now, what we found is all of these work really well. The only one that gives us a lot of issues are cinder block and concrete. And for that, we have something called a near field operation. And, and I, if you, and Asan, could you like 
Let me turn it over to you to talk a little bit about the near field operation. Uh, sure. Thank you, Vivek. So as Vivek mentioned, uh, first of all, we have done a lot of testing, so we know it works. Uh, but we also have done extensive simulations. So what the antenna does, it has a number of characteristics uh, altogether that makes this possible. So it's a high gain antenna when you sit at far field. And we also has, have very small side lobes, so it's a very focused beam. So even though we are within uh, the maximum ARP that you could uh, transmit, uh, given by FCC, we uh, basically concentrate that power in like a pencil beam, uh, pencil like beam. When you are in the near field, the antenna, uh, basically it's the same antenna, but the operation of the antenna is gonna be different. So it's basically reactive coupling between the antennas that people have done in the past. However, if you do do it, if you place two antennas close to a single black wall or any kind of wall, you could basically get these uh, reflections between the two antennas which basically means that you would get, get a notch in the middle of your band. We basically have uh, an innovation that it takes care of that and gives us a flat response. So the antenna basically uh, operates differently in near field and far field, and that enables us to go through different uh, wall material. So if it's a, a low loss, relatively low loss wall material, like uh, you know drywall, uh, you could basically go through in the far field of the antenna. If it's something very high loss, like cinder block, you could basically sandwich it between two of these uh, antennas, two of these um, you know units, and the signal goes through without any problem. Uh, in fact, you could basically overcome even more than uh, 50 dB of loss uh, in near field uh, through reactive coupling of the antennas. So the wave tunnel is the product. And we talked about before. And the product has two beams left to right, right to left, uh, and two 60 gigahertz beams. And we created two beams because we wanted to put it in a ring configuration. So one beam goes counterclockwise, one clockwise. Uh, so there's two transmit antennas to receive antennas in our product. One faces upstream or the other downstream. So we each, in our first product, each uh, radio operates in TDD mode and, um, and with 802.1180 chipset. So it's a payload of 3.15 gigahertz per beam. So the total payload is 6.3 gigahertz per node. Our second version of product, we won't be using that protocol uh, and TDD. Instead, we'll be using FDD to lower latency and our own chipset to do native Ethernet. And that can go up to 40 gigahertz. Uh, so we, in addition, this box is AC powered. It can provide PoE power over gigabit Ethernet ports to the devices connected to it. So the, the, the invention here, as Asan pointed out, and we've tested, Dave has tested, is beam forming and beam steering, which is enabled by the antenna, very high gain antenna, with a lot of circuit innovations to ensure that we don't lose gain when we steer, with a lot of innovations to ensure the accuracy of the, and the precision of the beam steering, um, and to do it at low enough cost and low enough power consumption. Now, so that's where the innovation is to make this happen. So we simulated it, We've tested it, and now we're building a product around it. So this is an example of the antenna, what the antenna does. So the top antenna is a standard industry and phased array antenna uh, with, a very, with a, beam that, a beam that doesn't have a lot of gain or directivity, a lot of side lobes that are very high and bandwidth limited. What we have done is we have increased the bandwidth of our antenna to significantly over 7 gigahertz, which is what is needed in this um, uh, to utilize 60 gigahertz and all the bandwidth available to us, much higher gain, 30 dBi, which means the higher directivity of the main beam, plus many, the side lobes are a lot lower, which means you can't interfere with us. Plus we have done it at a innovated innovation in the circuit, in the PCB stack up and the circuit design that can do it at lower cost. Plus we have done it with the distribution network in the circuit that provides more precision steering with flat response. So the combination of all these antenna technologies is one of the key components of what makes our system work. The other thing is our simple installation with smartphones. So we have a, um, either a technician can install it easily because all the technician has to do with a smartphone or an Android phone, uh, take full advantage of the beam steering and the beam forming, set up the, set up the node, the wave tunnel node, form the beam, sear the beam, put the next wave tunnel node in the, around the, around in the other end of the room. And these two wave tunnel nodes automatically find each other because of the beam steering and automatic algorithms, they lock to each other 
and then the technician keeps adding more and more wave tunnels to create this ring around the enterprise. You could also create a spine, which is a, a, a spur, if you will, to add more bandwidth to specific areas. Plus, if you ever want to change the configuration, it's a matter of taking all these boxes down off the wall and reporting, putting them back up again. So it's a very simple process to do moves, adds, and changes. Everything is managed locally or through the cloud. So it's effortless deployment of a ring. So the, the, the products configure themselves as a ring. And what we do is, the as I said before, there are two beams. One goes clockwise, one goes counterclockwise. They're two RF beams, each 60 gigahertz. And the um, and this allows this gives you the full ring capability. One of the uh, one of the uh, nodes is connected to the gateway or the uh, or the uh, controller in the closet. The rest of them are connected to each other in a network configuration. You can also create a spur or a spine, and then the uh, you can add um, you can connect uh, wireless access points to any of these nodes. You can connect different types of devices. You can connect five G devices. You can connect clusters of computers. And effectively, this becomes a wireless backbone, a wireless freeway for all those devices. Each of those devices provides POE power to the neighboring, uh, to whatever is connected to it. Uh, no manual pointing. It's all automatic. Electronics, beam steering. No mechanical at all work here. And each of them is a multi-gigabit, multi-port gigabit Ethernet switch for local connectivity. Plus, it has the redundancy of SDH and Sonnet because if a node dies, the rest of the four nodes in this particular picture close the ring around themselves and continue operating. And it's really, if you look at this picture, if you, uh, you know, we've gone to several customers who have told us that just to move a cluster of computers, especially in like an old building, a university campus, for example, from one place to another, significant amount of cost in wiring and cabling reconfiguration. In our case, the cost is virtually zero in terms of reconfiguring the network. We can mount our boxes on a ceiling. We can mount it on a wall like an exit sign. Um, we can co-locate it with um, wireless access points like it's shown in this picture. There are many, many different mounting configurations. Uh, so that's kind of what the product looks like. The use cases we are considering, the first use cases and the kind of entry markets we're looking at where the pain points are the highest, where the upgrades are happening to the later technologies like Wi-Fi 6, uh, but the or they're limited by the ability to upgrade the backbone would be places like manufacturing home, uh, large manufacturing buildings, warehouse buildings, healthcare, older healthcare facilities, multi-tenant buildings. Education is a big potential area for use cases. And there are others as well. Old heritage buildings would be others. And the key capabilities of our product to satisfy these use cases are, of course, fast reconfiguration, the flexibility of an entirely wireless system, deploying quickly, early quick installation in hours instead of days or weeks high speeds because we're using the um, multi-gigabit speeds and in a very in all in challenging environments. So look at the key value proposition of Airvine. It's a combination of three di three circles that have that meet. It's a Venn diagram. One is where you don't want to let you want to leverage your investment to the maximum extent possible. The second is where you would like to reconfigure frequently in the future. Where and um, but even if you didn't want to reconfigure want to install quickly, that would be a value proposition. And the third is where your bandwidth needs are growing fast and you need to provide high bandwidth as an up, to upgrade your existing network backbone. And with all of this, without the need to rip or replace your existing investment or your infrastructure. So in closing for this um, presentation, the important thing in, in enterprise IT right now is quickly and reconfigure networks, extend your capacity to difficult or impossible locations, especially in the COVID era that throws up a whole new set of opportunities for this. Um, and to scale and future-proof your network in an affordable way.